Welcome again to our Side by Side, and this is recorded for Tuesday. We're continuing our look at Proverbs, Jesus teaching us what true wisdom is. If I were to ask you the question, what is the most important piece of advice that you could give to someone? I wonder what you would say. I'm sure there are lots of things going through your mind just right now. Recently, when I was praying for someone who had just got a new job and I was thinking about how I ought to be praying, I was thinking about how they might cope with the adjustments to a new career, to the people on their team, the pitfalls they might encounter. And as I prayed, I suppose to just the flow of praying, I, the word confidence came into my, into my prayer. I stopped. And I just reversed straight back out of it and I thought, no, I don't think that's what I want to pray for. Not confidence, but then I went, mm, perhaps competence is what I'm praying for. It's really all about having the right mindset, thinking in the right way, having, I suppose, having humility at the very heart of all they do. because. Humility is a process, isn't it? Pride often in our hearts leads to failure. And if we're wise and we can repent of our failures and be disciplined by our failures, we can be humbled. And then we're in a position where we can really learn to be wise and gain some wisdom. I know that it's not easy for us to achieve this when we're young. And sometimes not so easy when we're not so young. When you read here in Proverbs chapter 1, we're told what the purpose of Proverbs is. And we'll come back to that question as to the most important piece of advice in a moment. But let's think about the purpose. The purpose is to teach people wisdom and discipline, to help them understand the insights of the wise, to teach people to live disciplined and successful lives, to help them to do what is right, just, and fair. These Proverbs will give insight to the simple, knowledge and discernment to the young. Okay, let's think about that last little section. These Proverbs will give insight to the simple, knowledge and discernment to the young. What is insight? The word can be translated as shrewd or prudence. It's really a special way of seeing things, isn't it? For example, just recently I was listening to how Donald Trump had been, his Twitter account and his Facebook account had both been closed or altered. And I was thinking, my first thought was, hmm, maybe that's a good thing. I didn't say much, but I had it, the thought in my head. Until later on I was talking to one of my sons and he was saying, I don't think that's a good thing at all. Because all it simply does is move his communication into other areas that may not be controllable in the same fashion. And I thought, you know, that's so true. When you try to stifle something, it produces another reaction that may be much worse. Hmm. So there's wisdom. Having the shrewdness, the shrewdness and the prudence to be able to discern that. And then you think about knowledge. There's a sense in which knowledge can be, well, just knowledge puffs up is what the scripture says in another place, meaning just a whole lot of knowledge, knowing things. And that's true. But there is a sense in which there's a, there is another knowledge which is crucial. You may not know all sorts of things about all sorts of, well, mechanics, economics, you know, even social sciences, or whatever it may be. But there are other things that we do need to know. We need to know what the reality is about this universe. We need to know how it works. We need to know that it is a moral universe with Moral authority vested in the hands of an almighty God, one who holds everyone accountable. We need to know that. If we don't know those things, all our knowledge about quantum physics, economics, or even how to be the greatest hairdresser, how to dress well, whatever else, these things are really unimportant then. 
So there is insight and there's knowledge and then there's discernment. Discernment, well, it's being able to see not only what is on the surface, but what may well be behind that. That's crucial, isn't it? Because if we merely see on the surface and respond and decide on the basis of that, we'll often end up in trouble. And we're not only told that the Proverbs are there to give us these things, but we're also told that we're there to teach us in an ongoing way. It says, let, verse 5 says, let the wise listen to these Proverbs and become even wiser. I have no doubts that as you listen to me, you have acquired a degree, maybe a large degree of wisdom throughout life. But there's always room for you and I to develop and grow even further. And that's what we ought to be doing. That takes us back again to the first question or the first comment. What is the piece of advice that you think is the most important? Well, verse 7 leads us to that. The fear of the Lord is the foundation of true knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and discipline. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. If you were to ask me what is the most important piece of advice, I would have to say, develop within your heart a fear of the Lord. But what do we mean by a fear of the Lord? Well, the Hebrew Bible has this thing called Hebrew parallelism. It means that the first line is often repeated in a second line, but in a different way that helps you understand it better. It may be the opposite so that you get the two sides. The fear of the Lord and then fools despise wisdom. So if we want to understand this more, it says, what is the opposite of despise? When I go to my dictionary, I discover that the opposite of despise is to respect, like, admire or honour. And so this verse is really saying, develop a respect for, a love for, an admiration for, an honouring of God, that's going to be at the very root of your knowledge and your wisdom. Without that, you're going to go nowhere. Isn't it easy to see those people who speak so powerfully in our world today, some of the political world leaders who despise the word of the Lord, that they have no wisdom, and their actions can be seen in the long term to do great harm. Some of you know that we have just acquired a puppy in recent days, and we're trying to teach our puppy. It's been an interesting process. I wouldn't say it's 100% success, but we're getting there, and uh, it's a challenge. I can merely try to teach our pup by total reward system, you know, Here's a reward for doing good. That will, of course, affect behaviour. But what happens if I don't have those rewards? What am I going to do when I'm out on the street someday and I have no box of tricks with me? Now, what's really important is that our little dog learns to so respect Joan and I that she does it out of love, not merely to get something in return. You see, I think that's what we're talking about when we think about the fear of the Lord. As we grow in our love for the Lord, as we grow in our respect for the Lord, so we find ourselves in a place where wisdom can be both discerned and developed within our hearts. So, if we want to read Proverbs with profit, and if we want to become wiser, we need to search our hearts we need to evaluate the love, admiration, respect and honour that we do have for the Lord. And perhaps we need to pray, O oh Lord, would you show me yourself that I might truly humble myself and begin in the wisest of places. Would you help me to love you, honour you, respect you? And then that will be the wise place to start. I look forward then to sharing with you a little bit more each day. And in the meantime, why not read through Proverbs just a chapter at a time prayerfully. And God bless.